Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Amanda Meyer. I'm the marketing coordinator here. Today, I have Nathan Good with me, the project manager of, of Edge on Site. Before we get started, I have a couple housekeeping items. All lines have been muted, and we'll answer questions at the end of the webinar. Feel free to ask your questions in the question window. Nathan, next screen. Thank you. I'll be sending out an email of the recorded link, and if you have any questions, please email marketing at estimatingedge.com. Alrighty, thank you, Nathan. Let's get started. How's it going today, everybody? As Amanda said, I'm going to be going over Estimating Edge's newest product, Edge on Site. So for those of you that don't know, Edge on Site is a application on the iOS device that allows you to take your estimate to the field in its entirety. What we mean by that, it's gonna allow you to bring your blueprints out there. Uh, it's gonna tag any notes and images. It's gonna allow you to assign tasks, add documents, uh, as well as give you some daily reporting. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of the, little, the initial functionality of the application, what it was intended to do, as well as some of the new features that we've added to Edge on Site since we released in March this year. So what you see before you is our overview screen. It gives you some very general information coming from the estimate. So on the left-hand side, you'll see our hours. The top line is the estimated hours. Those are the hours coming directly from Edge version 12. Below that is our actual hours. So that's going to be everything that you're inputting in on the iPad itself. Below that is the remaining hours, that's some simple math. Just to the right to the, of that, we have our hours percentages. We went ahead and built in those percentages just so that you can quickly compare your percentage of hours to your total production complete percentage. Uh, if those values are close to one another, then you know you're on as far as your budget is concerned. However, if they start to stray a little bit here and there, that's when you might wanna make some corrections, which is what Edge on Site will allow you to do. Just below that we have our activities. It doesn't have anything in there as of yet, but it will keep the most recent information that you put in over the last seven days so that way you can keep track of who's actually in your project and making changes. And then if you have some data that starts to go bad, you know who to talk to in order to address those issues that you might be having. To the right of that we have our production stats. So our production stats right now are currently set up in user codes. They can be set up in user codes, account codes, or phase codes. If you're not currently an Edge customer, that's something that as you go through our implementation process, uh, you will be shown. If you're an interior customer, typically you'll use your user codes or account codes. A lot of times those are very close or synonymous with one, each other, one another. Uh, if you're a roofing customer, a lot of times what we've seen is customers will tend to use the phase codes. Uh, what these essentially allow you to do is filter the shapes or conditions or details that your field personnel use or how they reference the labor items on the job or labor tasks. This list is interactive. If I click on each one of these, it's going to change some of the information I see along the bottom. If I click on one that's already got some information in it, you can see that some of it will actually change. So in this case, we have 143.3 hours estimated. We have one hour in this and our forecasted remaining is 142.4 hours. Uh, if we were to go ahead and make additional changes into that, that forecast remaining will in fact start to change a little bit more based off of your current rate of production. So right now it looks like we're actually pretty close on this project. So like I said, it does show you your entire estimate. It is going to bring over anything that has any labor attached to it. In this case, we have our sections of drywall and stucco. I can go ahead and expand those out. I'm going to see a preview of each of the blueprints associated with each one of those sections. It is a scrolling carousel, so if I go ahead and move this right here, it's going to display each one of the blueprints associated with each one of the pages that I have in the list just below that. Now in that list, we also give you the estimated hours per page, so if you're an interior customer, your page is typically going to be your floor levels. Well, those floor levels, in fact, will have total estimated hours, actual hours, and completion percentage assigned to them so that you can actually track that a little bit better per floor. Now, if you're a roofing customer, it could be something as simple as different roof systems that you have out there. 
uh, and your breakdown. Also something like zoning, if you go ahead and do your takeoff uh, using different pages because that's how the architect or engineer broke it out for you, you're going to get that breakdown by a zone if you will. Uh, same kind of setup and then it's going to allow you to report back on that. If I go ahead and click on one of these background images, it's actually going to go ahead and take me right into that background image. Once I'm in here, I can zoom out, zoom in. We do allow you a pretty deep zoom into this so that you can get as much detail as needed on this specific project. Now to show you the production tracking aspect of it, I'm going to go ahead and reference the list along the side. Here we have those codes that I referred to earlier. If I click on one of those, I'm going to see all the shapes associated to just that code. If I expand it out, I see the specific labor items associated to that code. Now in this case, I only have one. Now if I want to consolidate this and see one that's got a little bit more, I'll, I'll maybe go into my interior frame labor. If I expand that out, we see that we've got multiple different labor items in here. So with Edge on Site, we allow you to go ahead and track everything from a code level or from a little individual item level. From an individual item level, all I have to do is click on one of those and it's going to show me the shapes associated with just that labor item. If I continue to click and move through some of these, I'm going to see different labor item or different shapes popping up for each individual labor item. Now to mark production on one of these, all I have to do is select a line and then go ahead and hit my percent tool up at the top right hand side. If I hit that, it's going to bring up this dialog box letting me know that I'm on my 18 gauge 12 inch flat strapping. Doesn't have any initial quantity or added quantity in it. And just under my total quantity, it's gonna get me my total quantity selected. Again, we're pulling these values directly from the edge itself. If I go ahead and start to move this slider down here, it's gonna give me my representative actual quantity that that percent complete is equivalent to based off of what I have currently selected. Now once I adjust my percent complete, I can go ahead and add my total number of workers and hours. So if I had two guys out there and it took them four hours total to complete, that'd be two and two because we actually do multiplication on this giving us total hours. I'd go ahead and save that information there. Now if I didn't like the way that looked, I could go ahead and select that line and we give you another option for adding production. This is our percent tool, or percent slider tool. So if I go ahead and change this here using these crosshairs, it's gonna allow me to designate a very specific area of this shape that is complete. This way I can actually give an accurate representation of what's been completed on this wall. You can do the exact same thing for area, except it would give you a box that you select inside of and you can drag to fill up that box. Now it does only let you go from one spot to another. You can't fill it up in multiple spots. That's where if you're doing your estimate, you could go ahead and break things out uh, a little bit differently since the estimate controls everything that you're seeing here in Edge on Site. So if I've adjusted my percentage and I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and enter my labor, the same value that I had in there before. And I'll go ahead and save that. So now I have it there in the middle of the wall. Now to make things easier for everyone in the field, we do allow you to mark an entire section of a blueprint done going across multiple different units of measure. By doing that, we can go ahead and lock our screen up at the top right hand side and then click and drag and it's going to drag this little purple box. Everything that that purple box was touching, it's going to go ahead and turn red and select. This is going to allow us to grab every labor item that's associated with those shapes. If I go ahead and hit my enter labor, it's gonna let me know that that's adjusted because we had already had everything in there and now we're going ahead and making some changes to that. I can go ahead and hit my completed down here at the lower right hand side next to the save. It's gonna go ahead and bring all of those labor items that I currently have selected up to 100%. Again, I would go ahead and change my workers and hours. In this case, I wanna give it 160 hours because I'm doing this at the end of the week. Now you can do this by day or by week. It's really up to you guys. Obviously, the more you do it, uh, if you do it by day, you're gonna be able to make adjustments uh, to your field crews 
a little bit more regularly than if you did it every week. If you do it by every week, then you're not gonna be able to make those adjustments and you're gonna to have to find out week after week where everything sits. But we allow you the functionality to do both and that's what essentially this feature allows you to do. If you're trying to catch the project up at the end of the week, you can do that. So I've got my hours in here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. It's gonna go ahead and fill all of those lines up for me. So now everything that I had selected is turned green. Now, if I want to go ahead and submit that, I want to send that information back to our cloud so it can be viewed at our administrative portal. I just go ahead and go to my daily production screen. Here's all the information that we've sent back. Now, it is at a shape level. So it took those 160 hours that I put in there and it distributed it out based off from the estimate. This is what allows us to go across unit of measure. It would take the total number of hours and you as the estimators have designated uh, the weight value of each one of those shapes basically saying that one square foot one lineal foot or one count are different in some way and that way is typically going to be the amount of hours that they have on them so if I have a count that has 10 hours a lineal foot that has five and a square foot that has one we will weigh all the hours that you put in there according to what you sent us with the estimate and that's what's giving you those values that you're seeing here on the screen so if I'm happy with everything that I've got here, I can go ahead and upload it. If I need to make changes, all I have to do is select that item and I can go ahead and change the number of workers and number of hours assigned if I don't like how it was distributed. If I need to go back to the page to view where I took that off, I just go ahead and hit view page. But I'm happy with everything here, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit upload. It's gonna go ahead and send everything back. Now this does depend on your connectivity, whether it's Wi-Fi or LTE and how your connection is, how fast all that information goes back. But as you can see, it is pretty fast even with a lot of information on it. Now once we got back out here, it did change our interior frame labor. Now we have all those hours stored in here. So we have our estimated, our actual, and our forecast remaining at our current rate. Now in this case, we're way over the hours that we've originally had signed to this estimate for this user code. And I'm going to be able to see that now in my reports. So if I pull up my reports, I have two different types of reports in here. I have them by day or date range or totals. My totals is going to be from the very first time that I submitted any production on this project to its current state. The date range, obviously that information is going to change based off of whatever you put in there, but that's what it's going to allow you to report from week over week. So I'm going to go ahead and run a total of items report just to give you guys a little bit of the breakdown that we have on here. So it is going to break it down by unit of measure. That way it's the most accurate average from the labor items coming from the estimate itself in case there's any variation um, in the items that you have in there. So we give you your estimated unit, that's your units per hour, total hours, actual unit, units per hour, total hours, and balance, so what you have remaining, and then your forecasted units. So we're forecasting your remaining hours, what your gain will also be at your current rate, and then your target. So what the target is, is actual, how fast you're gonna have to go for your units per hour in order to come in on budget. Now you're gonna see a lot of dashes on here and that's because we've already exceeded the budget for a lot of these items. We pretty much knew that just from the overview screen before we came into the reports. We do have a couple targets that we could hit on here. They're probably exceedingly fast compared to what we had originally estimated, but they are in there. And that's just to help steer your crew. So if you had a little bit more accurate data in there, you should be able to make the necessary changes to help your crew going forward in order to come in on budget. Some of the other features that we have in here, we actually have some photos and notes that can be added to track the progress of your job through photos. If you wanna use that, we have the little camera icon up here. Go ahead and take a photo. There's my desk. I'll use that photo there. You can mark this up, annotate anything that you need to. And the great thing about this, you just place it on the drawing anywhere that you want to place it. In this case, place it on the upper left hand side. These icons can be changed in the settings. They can go from small to extra large. Uh, extra large, obviously, if you're having a hard time seeing it. Small, if it's interfering with anything that you have on the blueprint by itself, you can go ahead and shrink that. That way you can see what you need to see. 
we built in a carousel with this as well. So if I want to add photos over time to track the progress of that specific area, I can do that. Go ahead and take another photo, annotate or mark up that, save that, and now it's in my carousel. Now those will stay for the life cycle of the project and they also will get archived in the project in the administrative portal so that, that will be able to view, be viewed year over year. Uh, and that, that gives you a photo documentation of that project at the time. We also have the same thing with notes, just allows you to communicate collaboration purposes back in the office. Now, one thing that's new that we've added to Edge on site is the ability to have documents in here. So to add a document, you can actually do that from the administrative portal. You can see that I've already got one in here. If I go to that page in my administrative portal, I'll see that document. Only thing I had to do to add that document in there is just right click on my drawing that I have. Right there's my PDF. Now I'm not seeing my image in here yet because I haven't hit upload. The images and notes have their own upload process. I can go ahead and hit add document. It allowed me to pull in any Word, PDF, or Excel documents in here to add to the drawing. While I'm here, if I wanted to preview that, all I have to do is click on it. It's going to allow me to preview it. And there's that. And now if I go right back into my iPad and I click on that icon there, it's going to go ahead and load my PDF for me in here as well. So the functionality that we have behind this, and you can see it's we got multiple pages in here, brought everything in. Functionality allows us to add details, safety documents, uh, anything that we need to be able to communicate with the field in real time. Now it is not a document writer, so it's not going to allow you to make changes to those documents or sign them or write in them. However, it is just collaboration purposes for communication to keep everything for the project all lumped together while you're also tracking your production and getting those reports. So now that I've gone over everything that we have in here, uh, I do want to go over some new functionality that we're going to be adding here coming this next week. And that is going to be our new uh, iPhone application. So our iPhone application is going to be a review only application. And what that's going to allow you to do is view the pages that you have loaded. It's also going to allow you to uh, see the progress of each of those pages in an overview. So I'm going to go ahead and get that thing pulled up for you. And here is the iPhone application. As you can see, it is in a development environment. So I'm just going to go show you the top project that we have here. There's the overview screen, very similar to what we have on the iPad. If I go back to the iPad's overview screen, very similar. Gives you that same breakdown on the project. Now this is a new project that we haven't put any information in on, so that's why you're not seeing any changes in here. We also have your pages loaded in here. You can go ahead and view those and it's going to give you the page information. This way if you're stuck in a meeting or something like that and you happen to have your phone on you and you get asked a question, you can always go in and review the information from your phone without having to go to the browser or try to bring in an iPad or a laptop. The other functionality that we're going to be releasing next week is going to be our daily roll-up report. I'll give you a little preview of what we have in here. Now it's going to be limited just because we don't have much information in this project yet. It looks like we've just got a couple tasks for our task list that's also going to be released next week. Loaded in here. No information much on there. And then our documents. However, this report is actually going to be, have everything that you've done for a specific day. You're going to be able to go back and take a look at that. It's going to include your labor your notes, images, documents, and your tasks. So with all of that information, you're gonna be able to print that out, like I said, day after day, and it's gonna give you a full roll up of every day. Uh, and all of that's accessible from the iPhone. And then these reports will also be available on the iPad next week as well. Now, if I go back to my portal here. So some of the other functionality that you have on the portal that I can go over is it kind of gives you all of your administrative rights. 
uh, for controlling your job. So if you have information that's been set in here, you can go ahead and click on any of your active hours. You can override manually any of the hours that you have in here. Uh, this essentially makes sure that you can do any data correction that needs to be done in order to make sure that your data stays uh, true to the life cycle of the, the project. Other than that, it also gives you full access to your blueprints from any web-enabled device uh, simply by going to your pages screen. You're going to see each of those in there and this doesn't require you to have a sit sitting edge license. Uh, so just another perk of going to edge on site. Like I said, this project is continuing to develop. So as we move forward, some of the other things that we're going to be working on is uh, we're going to be rolling up the hours uh, by the cost code level, which is going to make sure that your guys in the field are no longer going to be required to put in those manual hours. They'll be able to do those all on the back end at the cost code level. Uh, that'll be one of the next things that we release. Uh, also, we're going to be working on materials towards the end of the year, adding some material in there. I'm assuming we'll probably do an, another webinar once that functionality is up and ready to go, but it'll probably be closer to the end of the year. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your sales team if you need a little bit more in-depth explanation of how we handle certain things. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you, do an additional demo if need be. Alrighty, thank you Nathan. Let's get started with some audience questions. Nathan, the first question. Can you use multiple users on a, the same job? Yeah, so multiple users, so we don't actually charge by users, we charge by the projects, which gives you unlimited users. We've also built in the functionality uh, with some smarts, if you will, so that if you have multiple users working on the same page in the same project, somebody submits something, it's going to go ahead and kick back to the other people letting them know that they need to update the information in their iPad. Essentially what we're trying to alleviate is any of the last in wins mentality. So it's going to let you know as long as you're connected to the internet in real time when somebody has submitted something back that way you can go ahead and, and update your information to be able to send everything through uh, without impacting the information that they may have already sent. Thank you. And another question, is there a Spanish feature? Yeah, so it'll actually take advantage of the native uh, iPad language functionality, meaning that if you go into your settings in your iPad and you go ahead and change your language from uh, English to Spanish, it will go ahead and convert everything in your iPad to Spanish in order to meet that capability. Uh, now we don't control it locally within the app, so it is something that you would have to do on the iPad. Uh, but other than that, it should handle everything that you have as far as Spanish is concerned. Alrighty, last question. Can this be used on a desktop? So it is not for a desktop. Now our administrative portal, which gives you all of those administrative rights like I went over, uh, allows you to kind of control and oversee the project. That is all done through a web browser. So of course it can be pulled up uh, on any web enabled device, including your laptop. Now, as far as marking the production and percent completes on everything, we do require that to be done from the mobile application using the iOS devices. Uh, in this case, just the iPad, since the iPhone will be for review purposes only. Now we did that on purpose. Uh, we just wanna make sure that you're looking at what your marking has done. Now I understand that a laptop is in fact a mobile device. However, uh, we did lock it down on the iPad a lot for safety reasons. iOS is one of the safest devices that you can have for protecting your data, which is something that we want to keep intact when using something like this. All righty, thank you again for attending and thank you, Nathan. Everybody have a great day. Thanks guys, take care.